Medea and Safi here welcoming you to another video here on my YouTube channel where I teach you all about English language. And you, my friend, you have the best seat in the house for an up-close and amazing experience. In today's video, I'm going to explain what IELTS test specifically the listening module is and what the listening module looks like. Make sure you'll stick around till the end because I'll also share with you some tips to improve your score. Without further ado, let's get into the video. In today's video, we're going to take a look at listening test, one of the sections of IELTS. And I will also provide you with some helpful hints that can help us do our best during the test. Most of this material comes from a book called 101 Useful Hints for IELTS. You can check that book out. It's an older version, but it's very useful. The listening part of the IELTS test is the same for academic and general training module. There are four sections and each is treated separately and is played only once. The moment you hear the words section one, section two, etc., you should be prepared and ready to listen for the instructions that are going to be given shortly. You should also listen for details about the information contained in the coming passage. Examples are who, what, where, when, and why. First, you should check where the questions are located on the pages in the section to be heard. In the short time given to you before the listening passage begins, which is usually only about 10, 20, or 30 seconds at most, you should do your best to predict what you will hear. When the conversation, interview, or lecture begins, the first item to listen for is the example. Sometimes the example is heard first, and, and then the passage is going to be played in full. In other IELTS listening tests, it is heard only once. Okay, here are some good tips from 101 Useful Hints for IELTS that I prepared for you guys. Number one, teach yourself to predict the upcoming questions or answers. There are many types of IELTS listening question tasks. You have matching tasks, true or false tasks, gap fill tasks, multiple choice tasks, short answer question tasks, sentence completion tasks, charts, table, table completion tasks, diagram labeling tasks, and so on and so forth. There's a bunch of them. In the listening test, you use four skills at once. It is not surprising that candidates often find this the most demanding for, of the four subtests, meaning the listening test is the most demanding based on candidates' experiences. You need to be able to read the instructions and questions, listen for general information, listen for specific information, and write the answers as you listen for the answers to the questions that follow. The 
Before each listening passage, in the time given to you to look at the section in the textbook or the booklet, of course, you should try to predict information about the listening passage. Try to predict the number of people involved and what they might be talking about or what they might be doing or planning. Try specifically to predict what they might say and the words they might use. You are given only a short time to look at the questions before the listening passage begins. However, to score well in the listening test, you need to develop the ability to think ahead. I feel like the more, um, the more, uh, I feel like the more effectively you can predict, the quicker your mind will form the correct word or the correct word associations to make with the topic and you will be able to better work out the meaning of what you hear. A useful exercise for helping to develop the ability to predict is to play audio CDs or files in English and pause after every minute or two to ask yourself what will happen and what you will hear next. This can also be done with videos, either tapes or, well, you can't really do it with live programs, but probably tapes news or recorded news items on the TV, interviews on the radio, etc. It is important to think about the words that you expect to hear. Write them down and then check to see how many you guessed correctly. Section 1 of the listening test is the easiest of the four sections. Each section becomes progressively more difficult if you know your English level is average or above average. That means you can have a good understanding of basic survival English. You should have little trouble hearing all the answers in section 1. Most candidates who are seriously considering studying in an English-speaking country should really be able to score 100% in Section 1. However, it is so easy to make unnecessary mistakes. It could be due to nervousness or lack of preparation or lack of focus or anything really. Listen for a general understanding of the situation and at the same time listen for the specific keywords or phrases. The keywords or key phrases in section 1 are most likely to be presented to you in the test booklet in the form of pictures or charts, diagrams or anything like that. In the other three sections, they are usually given in words only. How to predict, how I can predict the words that I might hear in section one. It's actually easier if you work out the word variables. And what does that mean? The variables are those words and situations in a possible answer that can vary or change according to what you hear on the CD. In many types of questions, multiple choice for example, those variable words or phrases, those choices are given to you. In other questions, the choice of words you may hear is completely up to you to predict. The fun part and the part that I actually want you guys to bear in mind and keep in mind is this. Always remember, most of the answers are often stressed or repeated. What does that mean? 
If you listen carefully to the practice CD, you to the practice CDs, you will notice that important information, which include the answer, is almost always stressed and quite often repeated two or even three times. This surprises many candidates when they know the answer and listen again to the CD. You have to know when to move on to the next question. In the IELTS listening test, each section is considered separate and you are not told when the next question in a section comes or starts. When the passage is being played, you should do these things. Please, please, please be aware of the content of the next question. Be ready, be prepared. As you listen for the answer to the current question, of course, if you do not think ahead of the next question and you miss an answer, you might be unable to keep up with this seat. You could still be waiting for an answer that has already been passed or that has already been given. Another tip that I can tell you is listen to the question topic keywords, phrases, any marker words, phrases, and the changes in the speaker's inflection or pitch or tone. Once you recognize that the question topic has changed, it is time to move on to the next question, even if you have not completed the previous question. Only very few listening test questions are given out of order. However, you must be flexible enough to look ahead at the test paper in case the answer to the question do not come in order as it's shown in the test in the question booklet. This is most likely to occur in a gap fill listening test. Marker words phrases are those English words or phrases that tell the listener that the topic is changing. Listen to them carefully so that you know when to move on to the next question. Some of them are. Finally, can you tell us? Before I move on to. And what about? Now tell me. Right, so the first thing. I'd like now to move on to. Well, that's about it, except for. Next, I'd like to. To start with. One more thing. Now, a piece of advice. Changes in the speaker's voice or tone also tell you that the question topic is changing. Usually, when an English speaker changes topic, his or her voice will lift considerably in pitch and sometimes in level of excitement. Another tip is to look at other question booklets. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Another tip is to look at other questions for the answer. In some cases, and only sometimes, the answer to a question could be given in written words later in the text question booklet or in the uh, text booklet or question booklet. In listening and reading gap filled tasks, the word or phrase you need is sometimes there 
in front of your eyes on the page. These little clues in the answer or even the answers themselves can, can sometimes be found printed in the text booklet, in the question booklet. And another important thing that I want to share with you is always listen for the speaker changing his or her mind. Often, the speaker changes his or her mind and make a correction before giving the answer that you need. That happens 90% of the time based on my experience. Alternatively, the speaker may correct someone else or even correct themselves or change their mind. So all of that can be misleading. It would be something like this. Good. Now, nationality, French. No, wait, wait a minute. It's a Swiss passport. Here, the clerk or the person who, who you are listening to wants to find out somebody's nationality. He guesses, or he or she guesses the, that this person is French, but thinks twice when she or he notices his or her passport is Swiss. It would be a mistake to write down the first nationality mentioned just because you're hurrying up to get the answer correct or the answer right. Next hint, use shorthand for speedy writing. Now, this one I had to also dig a little deeper in to see what it means. In the listening test, you are often required to listen for the next answer while writing down the answer to the previous question. It is one of the measures of effective listening, obviously. The examiners want to find out if you can comprehend what is said while attempting another task at the same time. This further tests your listening ability in English. To write down the answers more quickly, write only the first two or three letters of the answer that you hear to the point that you will remember them later by looking at them. This shorthand approach is effective in a gap-filled listening task because, task because some of the answers may come in quick succession, especially at the beginning of the gap-filled passage. You can complete the words during the short period of time given to you after the passage has finished. You are very likely to remember what the letters mean because you are the first because they are the first letters of words you have recently heard. At least that's what I try to do most of the time if I'm taking IELTS. Next hint. Practice, practice, practice for listening gaps. Gap fill tasks are usually considered by candidates to be the most difficult of the IELTS listening tasks. Your grammatical knowledge is as important as your lexical or your listen listening ability because answers should be grammatically correct within the given sentences. Meaning, if it's written I mm, yesterday, you can't write I write yesterday. You have to be aware of these things. The correct answer is I wrote yesterday. Most common type of IELTS listening gap fill task requires you to listen to a passage of spoken English containing information concerning a particular topic or event. In the test, in the question booklet, most gap fill listening tasks or a lot of gap gap fill listening tasks are news items. It is good practice to listen to the news either on TV or the radio or on the radio. Not only news items but all kinds of informative talks can provide practice of this kind. First, what you should do here is listen for general information. This is essential because unless you understand the general idea of what is being said, you will be unable to understand the specific information in the talk. Most listening gap-filled questions require you to listen for specific information. 
Try to make a video or audio file of your news items or talks from TV or radio. Now go over them, go over the CD or tape or whatever you recorded or you're recording and listen for specific information on that recording. It is useful to make an audio file of a video, video uh, like a recording file that is in the shape or form of a video because I, an item, because it is easier to play back the information um, on your file. And this is also very, very important. Do not try to understand every word. You should train your ears to listen for the words you are already familiar with, but did not catch on the first listening for general information, or for the first time you were listening for general information. You can also use the passages on the audio file that, you know, comes with some sort of a text. Um, this is also very natural, like you have to always remember that even if in your own languages, like the languages that you speak, your mother tongue, you don't really listen to all the words. You listen to a pile of words in a sentence and then you process it in your head. So if you're listening to something in English, it should work like that too. Let's look, take a look at listening gap fills step by step. Before you listen, read the instructions carefully. That is true about all the subtests and uh, skills. Always try to listen for the example. That's very important. The example they give is a very good way to follow. Choose the keywords or keyword phrases to listen for and be aware of question changing. It's very important. Be aware that some of the answers may come quickly one after other. Also be aware that one or two of the answers may not be given in question order. Please remember to be aware that the word or phrase you need may already be on the next page. Also, of course, use shorthands to improve your speed which you write, in which you write down your answers because it also saves, saves your time. In the time given to you at the end of the gap fill, make sure your words and numbers are easy to read. Yes, the answers to unanswered questions and do not leave any blanks. Check that your answers are given in grammatically correct English. For answers that should be in plural form, write them in plural form. And if you need to use singular form or version, use the singular, singular form. Always check for your grammar. Your grammar needs to also be precise. Okay, everyone, as always, thank you so much for watching my video. This was another part of the upcoming versions and upcoming, um, you know, videos, videos about IELTS. I try to put, I try to put um, important points about each skill, each skill or each part of the IELTS in one video so it doesn't bore you guys. And I also try to keep my pace down a little so that it wouldn't be confusing because sometimes in my head I think I spoke perfectly but then when I listen to it I understand that it was either fast or I didn't pronounce some words as I should or anything like that. All in all these videos are made to help you guys leave me a comment let me know how if these are helpful let me know if you like these type of lessons and if you have any questions write a comment down below as always don't forget to share my video make sure you subscribe to my channel send the video to somebody that you think might be useful for them and until next time i'll see you guys later